Okay, we're going to go ahead and start talking about dermatological disorders. And uh, we'll get started here with looking at, well, there's some pretty nasty warts up there, but I don't think we're actually talking about warts in this module. We'll catch that in another one. So let's go ahead and get started with what we will be talking about. We'll be talking about the uh, primary and secondary skin lesions, uh, the difference between the two, what makes a difference between a primary and secondary and uh, acne will definitely see a lot of. Polycythemia vera is another really interesting one. We'll look briefly at insect bites and parasites. There's not a lot to talk about on that, but we'll look at it a little bit. Eczema, okay, very familiar to a lot of people with eczema. And psoriasis, that flaky, itchy, silvery stuff that goes on your elbows and such. Lupus, we'll look at tinea and candida. Okay, so a couple of little fungal things going on here. Uh, herpes virus and the infections, including uh, some of the, uh, it leads right into genital infections. Okay, and we'll look at genital infections. So let's get started with this module about dermatology and all the things that, that can look really bad. Okay. We actually don't talk about the, the malignant uh, fibrous histiocytoma, at least uh, at, at this moment, but clearly it's a pretty nasty skin lesion. What we want to talk about in here is the difference between a primary skin lesion and a secondary skin lesion. And really what it's saying is physical changes in the skin considered to be caused directly by the disease process. So that's the, the key here is caused directly by the disease process, okay? As opposed to secondary, they may evolve from primary lesions or they may be caused by external forces such as scratching, trauma, infection, or the healing process. So uh, hopefully this is fairly clear. You know, primary is from the d disease itself and secondary, they can either come from the, the original lesion or it can be caused by exasper exacerbating forces like you know uh, scratching trauma like it says right here okay it's kind of hard to tell sometimes whether it's a primary or secondary lesion but uh, we'll see what we can do as far as you know doing the best that we can okay the uh, primary skin lesions we'll look at some of these things you can see them in your book also I don't really want to go too much into this, mostly because the slide is a little bit out of order. Um, but you have, and, and you can read this yourself. There's not a whole lot of point of me reading it to to you. But you know, you get your macule, small, circular, flat, different color. That's a freckle, right? Okay. Uh, vesicle, and that's what that thing is. Again, these things kind of go out of order a little bit as far as what pictures pop up when. Still working on that, but. Anyway, vesicles is, is another one, just you know, like a blister, I guess you think of a pustule, like acne, um, a papule, um, like a plaque of some kind. And uh, let's see what this does. Okay, a nodule, a little solid lesion, you can move it around a bit. Okay, a wheel, like a uh, hives or something is a wheel, skin elevation. Okay, and the telangiectasia is uh, a dilated blood vessel on the surface of the skin or, or, or spider veins or something that they might be called. And of course, that's a mole right there, right? That's a mole. Okay, telangiectasia, as we saw on the last uh, slide, it's just, this is a red face due to persistent redness and or prominent blood vessels. They call them spider veins and legs. You can see these these little red redness coming out. Yes, this is uh, quite frequently associated with uh, with alcoholism, but uh, whatever the cause is, it's, it's causing a, a um, just the blood vessels to be dilated and and red on the outside of the skin. Okay, uh, can't remember if we get back to this or not, but that was really the only thing on there for now. Anyway, all right. Secondary skin lesions, as in not being caused 
by the disease. These are things that happen because of something. So you'll see things like, like ulcers, for example. You know, ulcers, usually something causes an ulcer. It's not necessarily, or not usually, the, the main manifestation of a disease. Okay, same here with, with, with scale. For example, you get a scale in psoriasis, right? Um, crust is just really, you know, what you call a scab, really, or something that's crusty or scabby. Erosions, okay, something erosion, er, er, erodes, <laughs> okay. Scar is just a scar, right, from whatever the problem was in the first place that caused the cut. Again, not a primary lesion, it's a secondary uh, skin lesion. Okay, the cut was the primary, the scar is the secondary. Lichenification, as in lichen, as in um, uh, lichen planus or something like that, where you get a really inflamed, rough skin because of a um, infection of some kind. Okay, and atrophy is you know where you your your skin just kind of atrophies and, and breaks down. Okay. So that's, that's really breaking down. Okay. Name that skin lesion. There should be music, but it's not playing. So, sadly, that's all you get. Alrighty, let's look at these things and see what we got. Okay. So, what is this skin lesion present here? Okay, that's just your typical macule birthmark. Okay, whatever you want to call it. Okay, what about this one? Okay, it's your little scale right there, and you can see where it's scaly, flaky, dry, obviously. Okay, this one's a little, again, depends on what you're trying to answer here. If you're trying to answer, you know, what it is, then it is an ulceration of some kind. So you can see where the, uh, there's actually an, an ulcer right in here, okay, where there's like a hole digging in. All right. However, all of this other stuff, who knows what, what caused that. It could be from a burn. It could be from, from MRSA. It could be from some kind of necrotizing fasciitis of some kind. Uh, looks like you got some pus in there, and clearly some tissue is being destroyed. Okay. All right. Let's look at uh, acne. Move on to acne. Okay. So what's really happening here with acne is you got a pore that's clogged. Okay clogged with, you know, sebum, dead skin cells, whatever, and that's what we're talking about here. Okay, so you can see the cloggage right in here, all this beige stuff is, is clogged. Well, what happens is once you get that clogged in there, now you, you get the, or you, you get the start, I guess, of the clog, and it starts building up, okay? Um, once it starts building up, then what comes in is the acne bacteria. Right, so it says bacterium. So, Propiani bacterium acnes is the acne bacteria. Okay, so it starts getting in there, and I'm not sure from the, I guess the artist says these are the little bacteria, these little round things. Okay, and that causes a little bit of mild inflammation, and then it can get bigger and bigger and bigger, obviously, as this, as this bacteria is, is mixing in there with all of that shed stuff, keratin, sebum, all that sort of stuff, and and uh, now you got a big inflammation, and you can see where it kind of pops out as a, as a zit on the outside of the surface. All right, well, let's see where else we can go with this, okay? Obviously, this lady has a, a very bad case of, of acne, okay? So what we call typical, not typical even, well, yeah, okay, let's go with typical. Let's go with typical uh, acne is, we call it acne vulgaris. This is certainly a little bit worse than, than typical, isn't it? But, okay, so obviously a lot of people have it. Most common skin disease is acne vulgaris. Sure, we can buy that. Uh, usually in the ages in between, you know, early teens and, and middle 20s. But uh, that's a lot of people that have it at any given time, 85% during those ages, okay? So that tells us immediately there should be something that that makes sense because if uh, if acne is from a bacteria well why would it not affect people 
below those ages or above those ages, well, there has to be more factors in there, right? So now we start talking about, well, what are some of the other things that that happened? And um, I don't think I have it on this slide, and I'm quite actually not sure if we go into it on any of the slides. So obviously there are some hormones involved in that, and uh, genetics involved in that too. So I think we do get into that somewhere else, so we'll leave it for now. Okay, whiteheads. What's the difference between a, a whitehead and a blackhead is whether the comedone or the the part of the inflamed part of the skin is actually closed to the air or whether it is open up to the air. So if the air hits it, it becomes a blackhead, okay? Because of the whole oxidation process, oxygen from the air goes in there and, and turns that stuff all black. Okay, the other thing is the whiteheads. They're just white because they can't, they're not exposed to the air and therefore oxygen can't oxidize it and turn it back. Okay, that's our little papules and pustules. All right, um, little nodules, um, cysts, however it happens to be manifesting. Again, the uh, pus in there, or or maybe they're just hard little nodules, or maybe they're fluid-filled cysts. Okay, you've seen all of these in cases of acne, I am sure. Okay, where do you get it? Well, face, neck, chest, back, you can get it anywhere, but these are the most common places. That's because that's where the most sebaceous glands are located in the body. Okay, we have some severe forms of acne. Okay. This is acne congoblata, okay? These, is, these are interconnected, okay? So this is where um, you have you know, one and then maybe another acne thing. Well, when they start getting so big, they're like merging into each other, then that's acne congoblata, okay? Um, typically right in the middle layer there. In the, in the age category and, and in males typically, okay? Acne fulminans, the word fulminans is kind of like, you'll see that, F-U-L-M-I-N-A-N-T, you'll see the word fulminant uh, fairly frequently in medicine in general. That just means it's kind of like all immediate, okay? So it's it's not only abrupt as in acute, but it's like all out, okay? So an abrupt fulminant case of anything. So maybe you get fulminant hepatitis, as in it came on really fast and it just went all out, full-blown disease, okay? Fulminant AIDS. So you hear it in, in phrases like that where, where it just kind of comes on fast and just is really, really bad. Okay, so acne fulminans is acne congoblata, which is a bad one where they're interconnected but it came on really fast, okay? These are the ones that are going to ulcer, they're gonna cause all sorts of, of scarring. Uh, it can also cause fever and achy joints just because it, it came on so fast. Remember, there is a bacteria involved in this and um, it's re wreaking a little bit of havoc there, okay? The acne rosacea, now we're talking about mostly adult acne, okay, and when I say adult, we're talking about middle-aged adults here usually, so uh, this is where you see the adult with the red face, it typically goes away, comes back, uh, goes away, comes back, this is, again, adult doesn't necessarily look like they necessarily have a whole lot of, you know, bad acne or anything, but they get all these little bitty bumps and it's really red, and, uh, and we'll see some pictures of that, okay. There are some triggers that we think um, cause the acne rosacea, like sun exposure irritates it, uh, exercise gets that blood flowing up there, alcohol, any kind of inflammation. If you look at all of these things, they kind of have that in common where they're all kind of inflaming the, the, the skin in one way or the other, okay? We'll see this rhinophyma in a second here in the and the picture next to it, but that's a unfortunate case of acne rosacea that has basically gone crazy. Okay, I guess we won't see it on the next slide. We'll see it eventually here. All right, this is a, another slide on acne vulgaris. It's um, 
like I said before, it's caused by multiple factors. It's not just the bacteria, although certainly you need the bacteria, but uh, you get overproduction of normal oil on the skin and uh, hormones can certainly increase that. Um, you don't get enough shedding of your exfoliating dead skin cells, then it's going to plug up your hair follicles, right? So as skin cells um, kind of grow and they, and they start growing outward, then as they get further towards the end of the top of the skin, I guess, towards the epidermis, they should be, you know, their body should be dying and that sort of thing. And you can see where it's getting more long and then, and eventually they just kind of turns into like a keratin layer. It should just shed right off and get rid of that. Well, if you don't get rid of that, then it can, you know, clog the pores and um, plug the, up the hair follicles. Okay. Um, anyway, when that happens, that propion E. bacterium acnes gets in there and causes, of course, the, the lesions, the, the acne, the pustules, and that sort of thing. Okay. Move on to cystic acne here. Um, that tends to cause, um, be across the upper chest and the back a lot of times. Okay, these are the the um, the bubbles, the boils, okay, that sort of thing, cystic acne on the upper chest and back. Okay, the blackheads, I already said that, blackheads are open up to the air so that the air can get in there and oxidize it and turn it black. And uh, you can see that it's there's really no difference between a, a blackhead and a whitehead other than, you know, the air has gotten in into these open comedones and drawn it from the side you know you're like open like so okay so the air can get right in there okay anyway that's all there is saying about that blackheads collections of oil and debris they normally clog the pores but and normally white but as it oxidizes it turns it black okay nothing big on that here's our rosacea I was talking about Okay, I mean, if you look really close, you can you can definitely see, you know, there's some closed comedones here, whitehead right there. You don't really see a whole lot of blackheads anywhere. I'm um, possibly if you look really, really close, like on the nose in this little spot right here, but you don't see a lot of it. Okay, mostly it's just a, you know, it looks like a red rash or something almost. Okay, and, and again, this is a pretty bad case of it over here. You look on, on this here, it's not quite as bad where you see just a redness of the skin, redness of the skin. Again, this is the one you're talking about, middle-aged adults, and it just kind of keeps coming back, unfortunately, even into the middle ages, okay? There's more pics there if you want to, well, you can't click on this link, but you should go at the actual PowerPoint itself and look on that, and click on that if you want to see more pictures about dermatology and, uh, and skin problems with acne. Okay, this is... Again, not a horrible case of acne, but considering his age, you know, you would think you'd be done with that in your life, but obviously not in all cases. Okay, the rhinophyma. Okay, this is obviously before and after surgery. Um, but this was left over from that rosacea. Okay, this is obviously an older gentleman that uh, the rosacea actually turns into a rhinophyma, which is a, just a big mass of overgrowth of, of cells, and there's really no purpose to them uh, once they are cut off, which is what happened here. Then, then they're you know it's gone, and now it looks like they got a little bit of a scarring there, but it's certainly better than the alternative. Okay, more pictures of our acne conglobata, and. Um, if you can't see that very well, then we'll zoom in on it a bit here and look at it. And uh, this is horrible, right? I mean, this is this is this guy's. You know, he's, he's got many of these things that are just kind of grown all together. These are not little, little bitty, you know, pimples here and there. I mean, they're they they grow and, and obviously they scarring up and one scar into the other. This is going to leave a mark, right? This is permanent kind of stuff here. I mean, look at these boils up here. They're just kind of 
merging. I mean, this guy up here in the upper shoulders, it doesn't look like he has any decent skin anywhere around the entire part of the body here, um, up in his shoulders up here. So obviously a life changer when it gets this bad. Okay, this is the same person's forehead. You can again see these big, big comedones or big boils that um, are cystic, you know, as far as, you know, growing together and, and having big cysts in there, fluid filled. Same guy. This is his face, unfortunately. And um, you can just see where it's clearly affecting this guy's life. Okay, let me stop right there and we'll talk more about polycythema vera, vera next time.